Hi everybody, this is Steve Plumley from Certified CIO. Uh, this is a walkthrough on connecting to a terminal server as well as a Windows 8 walkthrough in terms of um, manipulating Windows 8 using a mouse and keyboard as opposed to having touch screen. So first things first, let's get connected up to the remote, uh, remote desktop. So over here, what I'm doing is typing in uh, remote desktop connection. So I hit start key remote desktop connection, and then we're firing up our uh, remote desktop connection here. There are some settings in here that we can touch on. These are going to be specific for whatever you may need for your connection. Uh, the most important item to check is local resources and make sure the printers and clipboard are turned on. Uh, you may have some additional features in here depending on how uh, we have configured your system, um, such as remote effects, uh, but we can cover those specifically with you um, as needed. So back under our um, default view, you're going to want to enter in your server name. In this case, we're going to be using uh, Alvord Baker Associates uh, Terminal Server. And uh, we're going to hit connect here. And we'll get prompted for a user login. So once we create the connection to the server, it's going to automatically configure the connection quality. And then we're going to end up with a full screen um, interface. So in their case, they have a uh, server warning, just letting everyone know that, that they are in fact tracking the systems. Uh, primarily that's a HIPAA requirement uh, on their end. And then what you end up with in the new Windows 8 interface, uh, otherwise known as Windows Metro, I think they're still calling it Metro, um, is the uh, new start menu. So the new start menu is very tile based so you have um, some predetermined items that are on here you also have this desktop tile that will drop you out to the desktop um, you can see that at least on this client's system we've already set some desktop icons for them to get into um, different applications that that they may need when coming in full screen the other thing that happens um, is across the top, if you're on a Windows 7.1 um, remote desktop connection client or higher, so that's going to be Windows 7 or Windows 8, you'll get some additional information. Um, this will actually let you map items on the fly uh, from your local system, it tells you what your quality of the connection is, and so on. Okay, um, this can also be used to bring up the start menu. So this blue bar in the past has usually just had a um, an X or a line to minimize or maximize your session. Um, however, now um, you have the ability to go in here and pull up the charms, which are the items on the right, or even go right into the start menu um, directly or do a switch apps, which will bring up the app list. Now we're not running anything yet here, so that's why we're not seeing anything. So let's get, um, in terms of usage, the very first thing is how do you log off? So to log off, uh, you can either get into the start menu through pressing your start key, uh, doing the drop down and hitting start, or a nice easy way is to bring your mouse over to the right hand side, down to either the top, or down to the bottom, or go up to the top corners, and you'll get this uh, set of charms. Now, when you click the start bar or the start charm, it takes you to the start menu. At that point, you would click on t uh, your name, which would appear at the top, and then choose sign out. Okay. The other thing that you can do, uh, that's how you would get out of the system. The other thing you can do in the start menu, of course, is find applications. So let's say that um, we had something that we didn't have on the desktop. Uh, so let's see here. They have a testing package called... Um, Basque. All right. So, in Basque, there is a uh, that was not on the desktop icons. Um, however, when we're in the Start menu, you can use easily use a search feature to find any application that you want, and then be able to open it that way. So that's a great quick way of getting into an application. Again, uh, the way that you would do that is you would press the Start key and you would type in whatever program you're looking for. So if we're looking for Microsoft Word, okay, I can type in Word, and here it is in the list. All right, and that would bring up Microsoft Word um, and allow us to do everything that we would need to do uh, within Word. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of Basque here. Um, just opening up programs to give a quick run-through as an example. 
Now, uh, the other thing that can happen in Windows 8 is the search. So again, the search applies to a number of different things. So when you choose search directly, it's basically taking you into the start menu. Um, but you can use it for all kinds of things. So let's say we do a search for a certified CIO. You'll notice that there are no apps installed on the system called certified CIO. But one of the choices that you get in this menu is to search in the store or to even look in Internet Explorer. So this is how you would do an Internet Explorer search. Uh, you may also uh, go right into um, a web browser directly and go to Google and do that whole thing. All right, this is just a feature that's built into the operating system itself that allows you to quickly get into a, into a search window. Now, something to keep in mind is that when you're in these new Windows 8 applications that are essentially full screen you have um, it's it's different so this is actually not a not an application anymore uh, like you would see in a Windows 7 or a Windows 95 interface so these are actually applications that uh, are standalone um, they're very similar to apps like you would have in a uh, tablet um, like an Android tablet or a, uh, an iPad um, to close these, you have two choices. You can do, well, you have a couple, couple of different things we can do. You can do an alt tab and that'll allow you to switch between applications. Okay. And that has worked the same way in windows forever. Uh, for those that like the fancy way, you can hold the windows key and do tab. Now in that, it gives you the ability to bring up this sidebar, uh, method of, of bringing things up. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the application itself, if you ever need to close one of these, the trick for that is to put your mouse up near the top, it turns into a hand, and then will allow you to grab the application and pull it down. And when you pull it all the way to the bottom, and it snaps to the bottom and looks like it's grayed out, that's how you close an app okay in in the windows 8 interface you also have um, what are called hot corners we touched a little bit on those uh, before we have the top right hand hot corner the top uh, the lower right hand um, hot corner that brings up the charm list um, you also have a hot corner down here in the left that brings up the start menu um, or goes directly to the desktop depending on which view you're in um, you can add items to these. You can add and remove tiles as you see fit. So as an example, if we right click, we can bring up the all apps list. Now the all apps list is basically your start menu. Um, now, uh, this is why I recommend changing the way that you work within windows and, and using the start key and then type what you're looking for method. Um, it makes it a heck of a lot easier than coming into this all apps list and scrolling through. And then when you select, right click to select, you can create these as a uh, pin to start. Okay, so uh, as you right click on each one of these applications that you'd like to attach to the start menu, uh, you would go down to the bottom and select pin to start. That will let you place them on the start menu itself. Uh, just to give you an example of what that then looks like, you can see the three applications that we've added. You can also remove these others, okay? So if you don't want certain things showing, you can go in and right-click, select a number of items, and then unpin from start, and that will remove them from the location. You can also drag them around. Uh, it's as easy as that in terms of organization. Um, they can be put into various groups. There is no single group size. Windows tends to kind of make an assumption as much as it can in terms of, um, of how it lays out the, the icons for you. So with that being said, that basically covers all the basics. Remember, hot corners. All right, so I've got our top right and lower right corners uh, to bring up the start menu. Um, within the start menu itself, uh, remember to use the search feature um, for any applications that you might need. Uh, that way you can quickly and easily find them and start them. Uh, the highlighted box, of course, when you hit enter, will fire that program right up. 
Um, and for normal log offs, the only thing that you have to do would be to do that start button and then click on your name in the top right and then choose sign out. And that is it. So it's a pretty basic run through, uh, just kind of a quick down and dirty how to get around Windows, how to get in, how to get out and uh, go from there. So hopefully this has been of use. And uh, if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to contact us at uh, helpdesk at certifiedcio.com. And we'll be more than happy to do one-on-one -on -one training and, and uh, get you squared away with whatever you need. Thank you very much. Have a good day.